Well, thank you very much, uh, Brock. And but thank you very much, uh, Cara and Brock, for organizing this uh, webinar series uh, as part of this uh, the CM uh, Restoration Thematic Group. Um, and thank you for inviting me and providing me the opportunity to present uh, the work that we've been doing in the past few years on nature-based solutions at CM uh, and together with the, um, the uh, secretariats, the IUCN secretariats. So, uh, as you said, I'm, I'm leading, I'm currently leading uh, the IUCN CM um, a thematic group on uh, nature-based solutions. And I was previously uh, leading the uh, thematic group on ecosystem services. Just gonna remove my video. Um, I have a background in ecosystem services or ecosystem uh, management and environmental policy. And I've, I did my PhD on Mediterranean wetlands. Uh, comparing the Hula wetland to the uh, Camargue wetland in uh, in France, uh, and I'm I've been working on nature-based solutions together with uh, CM and the Secretariat, the IUCN Secretariat, for the past uh, few years. So during this uh, webinar, uh, what will be or, uh, what I will be presenting is first of all. Uh, the evolution on, uh, of nature-based solutions as a concept and uh, the work that we have uh, been developing on nature-based solutions within IUCN. Then I'll present uh, specifically the IUCN's conceptual and definitional frameworks uh, for nature-based solutions. So how we define and how uh, we understand uh, and nature-based solutions. Uh, I'll talk about the principles for nature-based solutions that uh, IUCN has developed. I will present very briefly some examples of nature-based solutions. I will then um, touch very briefly on the global standard for nature-based solutions that were launched uh, at the end of uh, July. And then we'll finish with some questions and answers. So just in case we don't have time uh, at the end of the, the presentation, please feel free to reach out to me later on with, uh, with emails. I'll present, uh, provide my email address at the very end. So with regards to the evolution of nature-based solutions, both as a concept or the, the work that has uh, evolved uh, over uh, the, the, the past few years, um, well, since the first use of the term uh, that was officially in, in, in 2002 in a publication, there have been some meaningful events that uh, focus specifically on nature-based solutions. For instance, uh, one meaningful one was uh, a workshop, uh, Biodiversa, Biodiversa workshop in which the concept of nature-based solutions was um, discussed and was the source of the agreement um, a paper, a scientific paper on nature-based solutions. Then there were some international events. I'm just providing here just some examples because there is uh, a huge amount of information now that is uh, provided on nature-based solutions. So in 2017, for instance, there was an international conference on nature-based solutions specifically. In Tallinn, Estonia, there in, in 2019, there was um, an event on nature-based solutions um, in the Mediterranean uh, Sea Basin that took place in Marseille, in France. In 2020, just in July, there was the NBS Digital Dialogue, and that was organized by the national by the nature-based solutions initiatives. There are several events also that took place in Southeast Asia and in, in South America, um, Colombia and Peru and so forth. Then there are some online platforms or initiatives that were established and they're specifically focusing on nature-based solutions. For instance, uh, the Opla platform or the Think Nature platform, which also had a series of uh, webinars on nature-based solutions that you made look into um, 
and the establishment of the nature based solutions initiative at uh, Oxford University, for instance. Then in Europe, um, the European Commission has made uh, nature based solutions part of the Horizon 2020 research and innovation program. And it has invested in a series of research and uh, innovation projects uh, to increase and to build up uh, the evidence on uh, nature-based solutions in the past few years. That has, of course, increased the number of research um, projects uh, and paper publication coming from that region of the world. Then with regards to nature-based solutions in, in national or in international policy, um, you may be aware of the global biodiversity outlook, for instance, these are just really some examples, very recent examples, but the global biodiversity outlook that was just published last week uh, by the uh, UN Convention on Biological Diversity mentioned several times nature-based solution that could provide um, about a third of the total net emission reduction uh, that is required to keep the climate change close to um, 1.5 degrees Celsius. Also this week, for instance, there was the New York Climate Summit where nature-based solutions was mentioned specifically, uh, of course, in the context, context, context of uh, climate change. Um, and this is just, uh, these are just a few examples, as I said. Also at the national level, uh, there are several um, countries that are starting to develop their own policy on nature-based solutions specifically, both in, in Europe and in um, Mezzo and South America. And then with regards to publications, um, both Bray and uh, scientific literature have been very much on the, on the raise, I would say, in the past, especially in the past five years. There was uh, one publication that uh, focused on natural solutions, um, so very much related to nature-based solution in 2010. And since then, uh, there have been a number, these are just very few examples, but a number of books um, of reports that um, focused on nature-based solutions in specific contexts, for instance, nature-based solutions for water, or a series of publications by uh, the European, uh, by the EU that are focusing uh, on specific issues like um, water quality or na nature-based solutions for coastal resilience, nature-based solutions for, for climate mitigation, obviously, um, or uh, sustainable communities and so on. And these were just a series of reports that were published uh, in April. And of course, uh, in as I wrote here, uh, there is, a I would say, an exponential raise of uh, papers and scientific literature um, that is specifically focusing on nature-based solutions in the past uh, three, four, five years. So today, what I'm, I'm going to focus on is really the work that we have been developing at IUCN, so uh, within the Commission on Ecosystem Management, together with, as I said, the Secretariats uh, of IUCN, specifically on nature-based solutions. So in, at the WCC, so at the World Conservation Congress of 2020, uh, after, the, after the Congress, actually, the nature-based solution then became uh, officially one third of the IUCN global program. Um, and from, from that point on, uh, IUCN has been developing um, a definition and working on the conceptual framework for nature-based solutions to better understand and to frame what nature-based solutions are. At the next uh, WCC, World Conservation Congress in 2016, there was the release of a publication on nature-based solutions to address global societal challenges, which I will describe later on. Um, and uh, there was a resolution that was adopted by the IUCN community to define what nature-based solutions really are. 
in addition to the, the definition, there was a list of eight, eight principles that IUCN has adopted and the work on the nature-based solution principles has been further developed um, by CEM and was the basis for the operational framework that is currently um, uh, in development, I would say, uh, at very advanced stages of the uh, development with the global standard for nature-based solutions. So with the publication, I will go very briefly into this at the end, uh, with the current uh, publication of both the global standard for nature-based solutions and the guidance for using that global standard on nature-based solutions. That was supposed to be launched at the last uh, WCC in 2020. And obviously that was, um, that had to be postponed and it was launched uh, at the end of uh, July online. So to go back to what we did in 2016, as I said at the, the World Conservation Congress, there was a res resolution that uh, focused um, specifically on defining what nature-based solutions are. And the uh, IUCN definitions for nature-based solutions are actions to protect, to manage, and to restore natural or modified ecosystems, which address societal challenges effectively and adaptively, providing human well-being and biodiversity benefits. And by the main societal challenges that IUCN has um, um, identified, I would say, or targeted for uh, nature-based solutions, we mean climate change, natural disaster, social and economic development and the creation of jobs, human health, food security, water security. And the last challenge that we've added this year was ecosystem degradation and biodiversity loss. So in this conceptual framework, you can see that nature-based solutions is uh, this these actions that are here to protect, manage, and restore through based on uh, based on different types of ecosystems and are there to address different societal challenges and, um, and the benefits, the co-benefits from each nature-based solutions are supposed to be both for human and uh, for nature. In addition to the, that definition and the conceptual framework, the resolution um, also sets um, a list of principles, of eight principles for nature-based solutions. And the three ones with the, that I highlighted here, I'll, be get, I'll, I'll get back to them uh, later on. So those principles uh, with regards to nature-based solutions were on uh, the fact that nature-based solutions are not there to replace, but they really embrace nature conservation, both norms and principles of nature conservation. The second one that was that nature-based solutions can be implemented either alone or in an integrated manner with other types uh, of solutions to address societal challenges, for instance, Great engineering, uh, which is the most um, most used ones, uh, most used one, I would say, but also awareness raising or other types of uh, tools that can complement uh, nature-based solutions. The third principle was on nature-based solutions that are determined by site-specific natural and cultural context. And these include uh, traditional knowledge, uh, local knowledge, and scientific knowledge. So this is something to take into consideration in the planning of um, nature-based solutions. The fourth principle was on nature-based solutions producing societal benefits in a fair and an equ equitable way, and in a way that uh, promotes transparency and broad participation by the stakeholders that are relevant uh, to the, the, the NBS. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but nature-based solutions, uh, the acronym is obviously 
NBS. So, so if I mention NBS, I mean nature-based solutions. Uh, the fifth principle uh, is that nature-based solutions maintain biological and cultural diversity and the ability for ecosystems to evolve over time during the, the implementation of the NBS. The sixth principle was on um, NBS being applied at the landscape scale. So at, that's where we're moving from uh, the pilot, the small scale um, uh, into, into small scale uh, intervention type to a, a larger, a broader uh, landscape scale intervention. The fourth principle uh, is that nature-based solutions recognize and address the trade-offs that can occur um, um, between the production of a few immediate uh, economic benefits for development and on the other side, future option for the production uh, of the full range of ecosystem services that can be uh, provided. Um, and the last principle was on uh, nature being uh, nature based solutions being uh, integral part of the overall design uh, of policies of measures and action to address one or specific uh, societal challenges. So it's really important to integrate uh, nature based solutions in policy in actions. Uh, and in different measure in order to be able to uh, have a, a larger, a, a broader impact to upscale and outscale the, the nature-based solutions and the benefits of the nature-based solutions. In that same resolution uh, that was adopted in 2006, uh, we uh, referred to the fact that nature-based solutions um, uh, will have to be uh, the, the guidelines, the parameters, and uh, that operational framework for NBS will have to be further developed. And this is what I'll be uh, referred to, referring to at the end of this presentation. Um, in this slide, um, I'm just going back to the uh, to the conceptual framework. We found it uh, easy to easy and um, um, let's say e easily understandable that the nature-based solutions framework um, is an umbrella type framework um, of well-established concepts that are either ecosystem-based or ecosystem-related uh, uh, concepts. And all of these concepts have in common uh, the fact that they are um, addressing societal challenges that are based or related uh, on, um, on nature. And um, um, yeah, and yeah, yeah, that they are based and related to, uh, to, to nature, I would say that they're using um, uh, um, modified or natural ecosystems in order to address those societal challenges. So we classified, it was really a, a category that, that we made just for uh, to, to better um, uh, understand or to more easily understand and classify the, the different concepts. So there are restoration types of uh, nature-based solutions, for instance, ecological restoration, ecological engineering, and forest landscape restoration. There are issue-specific types of uh, related approaches such as ecosystem-based adaptation, ecosystem-based mitigation, or ECODRR, so ecosystem-based disaster risk reduction. There are infrastructure types uh, of solutions, such as green infrastructure, that are usually used in, um, in a urban context, so natural infrastructure. Then there are management types of approaches, such as ecosystem-based management approaches or integrated uh, water resource management, integrated coastal zone management, and then protection types of approaches, uh, which includes well, area-based conservation. Uh, and I will provide an example uh, later on. So in this slide, uh, I would like to illustrate two important points that are uh, um, 
that that we need to remember about nature-based solutions well within the for for in within the IUCN um, definition I would say or framework um, it's that NBS this this was the second uh, this was the second um, a principle that NBS can either complement or be complemented with other type of measures, and uh, that NBS can involve the use of natural areas or conservation measures, and uh, even if they were originally established for other purposes uh, than the one, then like a uh, societal challenge to address, uh, and that was targeted by uh, the nature-based solutions. So in this case, we have um, a protected area here that uh, was originally created to provide an intact uh, habitat for a particular species. And it is located, as you can see, right next to a watershed that has human, small human settlements. There is a wetland here and there are some uh, mangroves on the coastline. And there are not... Uh, a lot of flooding and uh, there aren't really uh, there is forest around the that uh, watershed which is able to absorb uh, the floodings if uh, if it ever or the storms that are ever occurring but over time there is deforestation around uh, that water mouth uh, that river mouth uh, and there is degradation of the forest and degradation of the wetland ecosystem and the coastal wetlands uh, coastal man mangroves um and there is both expanding um, settlements as well as a city that is being built right next to uh, that area so the remaining forests here in the protected area will now play a critical role in, in absorbing uh, the floods and in uh, the nbs Oops. sorry so here um um, the, the protected area is able to, um, to use this new function and to reduce flooding, uh, flooding risk of uh, the entire area uh, by reconnecting, reconnecting to the wider landscape uh, of uh, that, that area. It will help to improve the entire watershed uh, functionality and the, inter the NBS intervention here um, will include restoring the watershed, uh, including the protected area, although, uh, as I said, it was originally established in order to conserve a certain species. Um, and it is done in combination with other types of intervention. So there is mangrove uh, replanting on the coastline, there is wet wetland restoration, and there are also conventional measures, such as the construction here of a, a concrete uh, barrier and a wall. And these, and there is also in the urban area, for instance, there can be a green infrastructure, green infrastructure uh, practices that, that can be uh, implemented as well. And these solutions can support local livelihoods and biodiversity. In the, the 2016 uh, publication that uh, IUCN and CM uh, um, launched, there is, uh, you will find in, in more detail the whole framework of NBS, a conceptual definitional framework and the link to different principles as the first uh, part. And then the second part of the publication is um, show, showcasing 10 different case studies um, that we, we identified as successful case studies of nature-based solutions that are implementing one or several types of uh, nature-based solutions in completely different contexts. Um, so for instance, uh, in different regions in North America, South America, in Africa, in the Middle East, in Europe, or in, uh, in East Asia to address different types of societal challenges so for instance human health and um, and climate change in this um, nbs that is in a urban context uh, in spain or for instance uh, 
uh, coastal uh, and mangrove uh, far, uh, forest um, that is um, um, uh, that is um, in which uh, ecological restoration, forest landscape restoration, and ecosystem-based management are used as NBS to address climate change, food security, and economic and social development. So anyway, you can, if if you're interested, you can look at those different uh, types of ecosystem of nature-based solutions and how they are combined to address different types of uh, societal challenges. So just very briefly, I'm um, uh, um, showing you here uh, two of these um, case studies. One is in Barcelona. It is on developing green infrastructure in uh, a urban environment. Uh, and this is using some tools such as green walls and roof basins uh, to improve air quality and to support wastewater treatment, to reduce stormwater runoff and water pollution, and also to improve the life of uh, the quality of life for residents. And in this case, for instance, besides uh, the green infrastructure tools that are used within the urban context, there is also um, some some uh, awareness raising tools that are used with this this type of bioblitz uh, events uh, with the local community, or there are community gardens that are being. Uh, uh, used and established uh, around uh, Barcelona. And these are, as I said, to address climate change and human health, for instance. Another completely different example uh, uh, that you can find in this, this publication is on uh, restoring, it's, it's in Jordan in, in the Middle East, and it's in restoring, uh, restoring dry lands to strengthen uh, water security in this case. Uh, local livelihoods and uh, restoring resilience to climate change impacts. Um, and, and in this case, there is ecosystem-based adaptation and ecosystem-based management uh, types of uh, solutions that are, that are implemented. And here we can see, for instance, um, some traditional uh, ways of planting uh, native uh, vegetation as part of uh, this nature-based solutions and involving the local community in the implementation of the nature-based solutions. So I will now um, or, um, or present the work that we've been, the further work that we've been doing on, specifically on um, the principles, the eight principles that were, I was referring to um, for nature-based solutions. So what we did with a large team of, of people with NCM and, and IUCM was um, to look into the, the principles, the eight principles for nature-based solutions. And we reviewed the, um, a, a large, type, a, a large uh, list of uh, similar approaches. So ecosystem-based or ecosystem-related approaches that um, had also principles uh, that were published and, and in use, and then compare those principles to understand if nature-based solutions could really serve as an umbrella type uh, of, of framework, and also uh, how or what principle was different uh, and stood out uh, in relation to the principles in the other, um, the other framework. So in this case, what, after the, the revision of the different, uh, because the, the, the other concept, uh, we identified principles in uh, ecological, for, for ecological restoration, for uh, forest landscape restoration, for ecosystem-based adaptation and for area-based conservation, as well as the principles um, that were published for uh, ecosystem for the ecosystem approach. Uh, and I didn't mention that the ecosystem approach is very much um, the basis, I would say, the foundation for a lot of uh, our work on on the nature-based solutions um, concept. And what we found out by comparing those uh, the principles in those 
in those five different uh, concepts was that uh, all of the principles were related uh, uh, or most of the principles were related to most of uh, the principles in those uh, different um, uh, different co concepts but there were three that really stood uh, out um, in the um, NBS principle. The first one is the, the principle on complementarity, the one that I mentioned earlier, how uh, important it is to, um, to include, if it's possible, um, synergies and to have nature-based solutions being complemented or complementary to different types of uh, solutions like the ones that I was uh, illustrating um, earlier with the protected area and uh, the wall that was built to help um, restore that, uh, that watershed. The second principle that, that really uh, stood out was the, the, end, the, the principle number six on landscape scale. Uh, so the need to, um, to have uh, nature-based solutions um, intervention that would be at least designed, uh, keeping in mind the broader scale and um, trying to have nature-based solutions uh, implemented at the landscape scale. Um, and then the last one was uh, the last principle, um, principle number eight on policy integration. So the, the, the importance of integrating the nature-based solutions with policies with measures with actions and involve these types of uh, sectors and of stakeholders in order to um, ensure that the nature-based solutions would be with a broader effect i would say to um, effectively address the societal challenge or challenges that are targeted And what we also found out when we did that study is that there, there were some specific terms uh, that were missing or that were not sufficient, that we found that were not sufficiently emphasized in the NBS principles. And these were adaptive management and adaptive governance, the effectiveness of nature-based solutions, the uncertainties that are linked to an NBS uh, intervention, in implementation, the fact that we need uh, multi-stakeholder participation, and the temporal scale and the long-term stability. And these points together with um, the linkages and the um, linkages and the, the importance of, um, of the principles were important to, to identify at this stage because the, the work that uh, we did on the principle and on the definition of framework for nature-based solutions served as the basis for developing the operational framework of um, the IUCN nature-based solutions. So the global standard, uh, global standard for nature-based solutions. And you, as you can see here uh, very briefly, we, we made sure that each of the principle uh, and, and the, the, the different issues that were not sufficiently underlined uh, or mentioned in the principle were properly mentioned in the global standard in one of the eight criterias, criteria of the global standard for nature-based solutions. So I won't describe the global standard for nature-based solution now because we'll have a separate event um, that will be specifically focusing on presenting the global standard in about a month from now for, for the CM, CM uh, members but what I would say is just that the, there are uh, I would say three documents there is the IUCN global standard for nature-based solution doc document that has been already launched uh, at the end of July, and you are welcome to look into the into the and into the IUCN website and to see the the, the launch uh, event. There is also the guidance for using um, the IUCN global standard for nature-based solutions. 
So the, the global standard for nature-based solutions document is uh, much more uh, concise, I would say, and is really presenting the different criteria and the indicators for each of those uh, criteria. And the guidance is providing more of a background on what nature-based solutions are, why we need a global standard for nature-based solutions, what type of uh, audience um, could use and sectors could use the, um, the global standard for nature-based solutions, how, um, what we mean really by each of the criteria and the indicators. Um, and, and then the last part is the self-assessment. Uh, this hasn't been launched uh, as of yet. It will be launched, I think, in, in a few months from now. Um, but I will, I will provide you with um, the link to the, um, the draft self-assessment if you're interested in um, assessing one of, uh, one of the interventions that you're working on. Um, so I will talk about this very briefly later on. So just to give you a, a very general overview of uh, what the standard, the global standard for nature-based solutions uh, look like. There are eight criteria and there are 20, 28 indicators, I believe. I may have uh, made a mistake here, but I it may be 20, 28 indicators. Um, and those eight criteria are um, focusing the first, first criteria is focusing on the need for nature-based solutions to address one or several societal challenges, the need to have um, an N N NBS uh, planned, as I said, designed at least, and implemented at scale, so taking into account the broader, uh, the broader landscape. The need for an NBS to provide biodiversity net gain, uh, net gain. Um, the need for an NBS uh, to be economically uh, feasible, the need for uh, the implementation of the um, nature-based solutions to be inclusive and to have um, uh, in uh, inclusive uh, governance, and the needs, need for uh, balancing trade-offs uh, within the implementation of, uh, of an NBS, the need for um, adap uh, adaptive management uh, within the, the course of the implementation of, of NBS. And the last one is on mainstreaming and sustainability, as I said, like the integration of a nature-based solution within policy, for instance, mainstream, mainstreaming in different sectors and with different types of stakeholders. I just want to show you here uh, very briefly the governance structure. It is, uh, um, as I said, that the global standard was just launched uh, a month ago, over a bit, over a, a month ago. Uh, so it is a, a work in progress, and we're we're finalizing the the governance structure of the global the NBS global standard. But I wanted to to show you this uh, this graphic. Um, the governance structure will have four affiliated bodies, the International Standard Committee that will be in charge of the oversight and the safeguarding uh, of the global standard, and it will be in charge of the revision of the standard. The second body will be the, the Science uh, and the Knowledge Committee, in which uh, CM will have uh, um, a role also. Um, and this will be in charge of uh, the scientific oversight of the standard of defining and exploring research priorities and developing evidence base for this for future standard uh, revisions. Then at the national and the regional um, level, there are the national and the regional hubs that will be uh, developing technical expertise that will be uh, developing also capacity, capacity building to uh, help implement uh, nature-based solution, the nature-based solution global standard, and they will be um, help, they will help to adapt the standard to the local or the regional context. 
And then that last body is the user group. And this is really what uh, I thought some of you might uh, be interested in, uh, in joining. There is uh, a user group that is uh, currently being um, developed, I would say. I will give you a link on the, on the next slide. And if you would be interested in joining the, the user group and piloting, for instance, the, the global standard uh, or being uh, a part of the user group in the future development of the, the global standard on, on nature-based solution, you're most welcome to, to join this uh, community of practice. So as I said, the, the standard will be further um, further presented in detail in an event probably in a month from now. Uh, so I'll just give you here some, uh, some useful resources um, uh, that are related to IUCN on nature-based solutions. There is, as I said, the IUCN report of 2016 in which you will find both the definition of conceptual framework as well as those 10 successful NBS case study that I, I briefly mentioned earlier. You can find some information on the CM nature-based solutions thematic group um, web, web page uh, um, with uh, different links to not only um, this specific work, but, but uh, more broadly the work that IUCN is doing on different types of NBS um intervention and, and and work and then there is a quite recent uh, website on that is focusing on nature-based solutions and specifically on the standard uh, for nature-based the global standard for nature-based solutions and you will be able to download uh, the two publications that i mentioned the global standard as well as the guidance both in english french and spanish in those two links um, and and i think this is it <laughs> i thank you for your attention um, if you would be interested in becoming involved uh, in the, um, the the work that we're developing and that we're doing on nature-based solutions within the commission on ecosystem management YCN, you could either join the CM nature-based solutions thematic group. Uh, also, please feel free to send me uh, questions or if you would like to have details on uh, the, some of the references that I've mentioned uh, during this presentation, please feel free to uh, send me an email. And with regards to the global standard, um, if you would be interested in, in uh, joining the user group, for the IUCN Global Standard, you are very welcome to, um, to um, uh, enter this survey and enter, add your, your uh, details and uh, then uh, test or pilot the global standard and the self-assessment of the global standard in uh, your own uh, context and case study. Thank you very much. Manuel, thank you so much for that very clear description of nature-based solutions. And um, thanks to all of our attendees for participating. We have about 15 minutes for questions and answers. There are quite a few already in the Q&A box. I did see one or two that came into the chat. Please, if uh, you wouldn't mind, move those over into the question and answer box. It will make it easier for me to organize them. And um, for those of you who may need to jump off, just a plug for our October session, which will be on the 16th, in which we'll, we will be talking about tree planting and ecosystem restoration and how to improve outcomes. Okay, so we're gonna start with a series of questions that um, get to the relationship between NBS and um, other types of frameworks. The first one is, are natural solutions and nature-based solutions synonymous? Can you hear me? Yes. I'm not sure on what screen I am right now. Okay. 
Um, so natural solutions and nature-based solutions are very similar, as I mentioned, uh, but they're not exactly the same because natural solutions, um, in, in my view, uh, natural solutions are referring more strictly to um, uh, the protect and uh, the, the role of um, um, the role of protected areas um, to address uh, certain societal challenges, but uh, they're, they're they're mainly on, uh, I believe, uh, for conservation uh, purposes. And nature-based solutions, as I mentioned, do. Uh, embrace um, conservation norms and measures, but um, I believe that nature-based solutions are complementary to conservation norms. So uh, um, natural solutions are part of uh, natural uh, of nature-based solutions, but in a very specific context of uh, protected areas or area-based uh, conservation. Great, um, thank you. There was another question about nature's contributions to people, NCPs, and the relationship with the MBS. Um, I know that uh, a study, well, I'm, I, I haven't been working on this specifically, but I know that a study will be done or is currently in, uh, in progress in one of our other thematic groups. Um, and I think that this, the, the link between the, the two concepts will be explored then. It was supposed to be part of the, uh, in, a, in, a, in an event at the World Conservation Congress in June that was postponed. So I cannot say more, um, but I'm happy to have uh, the email of that person and contact you uh, or connect you with the person that, um, that is going to lead this work. Great, I'll, I'll share that. Um, but what about within the principles and the standards? What do they say about, uh, I know NCPs, it's, it's not framed as nature's contribution to people, it may be ecosystem goods and services. Actually, I can't recall, but can you talk no, about the- I think we do, we do um, in the global standard, I do think we, we're we mentioning both ecosystem services and uh, nature NCP. contribution to people, yes. Okay. Great. So there, there are uh, at least several principles that are aimed at ensuring improvement of NCPs and ecosystem goods and services. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. right. And so then, Emmanuel, you were saying that there is an effort, um, a research effort to quantify or characterize. Um, More specifically, the link. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Okay, great. Then there was another uh, question about frameworks asking about um, the red list of ecosystems and uh, nature-based solutions. Um, so there is one thing I didn't, uh, I, I forgot to mention here, but uh, the work on nature-based solutions, I mentioned that timeline and I, I spoke about uh, 2000 and and two onwards, but uh, really the work on, on uh, ecosystem, on, on nature-based solutions in general that has been uh, developed by UCN is very much based uh, on previous work. Uh, so it's not only, you were, you asked me about the red list of ecosystem, right? Correct. Yes, so correct. Not, not only about uh, the red list of ecosystem, but in general, the work that has been developed by, um, uh, on ecosystem-based adaptation, ecosystem-based mitigation, on forest landscape restoration, uh, and a number of other uh, frameworks so that, that IUCN has been developing uh, earlier on. Um, so some, um, th there was one, I, I think there is one, so, so I believe that the, the red list of ecosystem is also part of it, uh, has also been, um, I would say in some some of of the the, the work that has been done uh, within the RLE uh, has inspired some of the nature based solutions work maybe, uh, but it is not specifically mentioned uh, in 
in the, the global standard as much as I remember. But I believe also there was uh, some effort one, one year ago uh, to link the two concepts. Uh, I'm not sure where, where that stand, whether it's, that stands though. Great, thank you. Um, so there are a couple of questions related to using the NBS and verifying. I'm going to read both of them to you. They're different questions. Um, I'll read the second one again after, but just to prime you. Um, the first is, can you explain what kind of verification process will be associated with the standard? And then secondly, can you clarify how the standard is meant to be used? Is this for ensuring NBS projects are implemented appropriately and effectively? And is there any link between the standard and country commitments to the uh, United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity or the Climate uh, Change Convention or other conventions? Talking about the standard specifically, right? Correct. Yeah, so I've been asked not to, not to answer any question at the moment regarding the global standard because we will be presenting this more in detail with a panel of uh, different, different speakers that have been uh, working on the, the criteria and on the standard. Uh, so I would, uh, I mean, what I can, I can, I can tell you on, on the top of my head is that it's, it's really to do a self-assessment to make sure to, to, to uh, enable your, um, uh, to en enable the, the practitioners or the users to self-assess the, the intervention that they're working on uh, and to, be, to, to identify um, which criteria or which indicator, um, how they're, how they're uh, doing and which criteria and indicator they could uh, reinforce in order to have a stronger, uh, uh, a stronger uh, and more efficient uh, nature-based solutions. But uh, regarding the self-assessment, the guidance, and, and so on, the instruction and everything, I would, I would prefer to keep these questions for the, the event that will, will take place in, in a month from now. Okay, great. Thanks for that reminder, Emmanuel, uh, that of this next event, specifically on the standard. Um, we have a question that came in. Was there a systematic comparison done between the NBS definition by IUCN and the NBS definition by the European Commission? If not, it might be very interesting to find out the differences. I have the impression that the European Union Commission, that sorry, the European Commission focuses more on the urban scale, whereas IUCN focuses more on other landscapes beyond the urban and emphasizes the landscape scale. Right. So we did touch uh, on, on the differences between the two definitions. So the IUCN definition and the European Commi Commission uh, definition uh, in both uh, in the two of the publications that I mentioned here, so the 2016 and the paper that we issued in 2019. But we haven't done like a specific study that is, um, how did you say, system systematically comparing the two definitions and I, I support this. I would, I would be really interested actually to work on, on this. Um, in very, very broadly, I would say that uh, some differences are that uh, the IUCN definition for nature-based solutions um, are uh, adaptable or they, they, they will be uh, used, they're supposed to be used in a broad range of uh, of contexts, as I as I showed in the the list of case studies, that this is exactly what we were trying to to show with the, that uh, diversity of case studies, whether it's uh, geographical context or ecosystem or ecosystem type context, or the type of uh, societal challenge that is supposed to be addressed, and uh, the 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 tools or the different types of NBS that can be used. Uh, um, to address those societal challenges. And um, the European Commission is indeed uh, uh, often um, maybe more relevant, a little bit more relevant to the urban context on, on one side, although I've seen that a lot of the, the work that has been developed in, in Europe uh, 
recently has also uh, worked on other uh, region than, than Europe. And I would say that um, it is indeed more um, or often more relevant to the European context. Uh, it is very much um, um, focusing on uh, economic, social and, and environmental benefits. So the creation of jobs and, um, and it is um, uh, a lot um, uh, relevant more to the, the urban context and tools that are related to uh, green infrastructure. Um, and one more thing also, one, one more uh, major difference uh, is that in the uh, European Commission definition, there is, they are uh, incorporating uh, solutions that are inspired uh, by nature, whereas in the IUCN definition, we uh, really um, only incorporate solutions that are based uh, directly on a functioning ecosystem, uh, as I said, restored or managed or natural ecosystems, um, but not inspired by so solutions such as biomimicry won't be uh, considered NBS uh, by UCM. Thanks for that distinction. So we're running short on time and there's so many interesting questions in the chat. I'm hoping we can get to two categories of questions. One has to do with trade-offs and the second have to do with how to engage. Um, but there were a lot of questions about whether specific activities were NBS, things that would be interesting to discuss. And so um, I think it might be worth organizing a discussion hour where you know, we could have just more open questioning about MBS and how to move forward. So I'll get with Brock and Emmanuel and, and others and see if we can organize that through our uh, CEM ecosystem restoration thematic group. In our last yeah, minute. It's a great idea. Here, I mean, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I really need to, to go to something else in yeah, uh, one off. One minute, but okay. I would be. Well, let me I just said, use the last minute. Then I would be very happy to to reply to to thank you. Yeah, <laughs> to answer any question by email also. Okay, thank you so much, Emmanuel. Uh, we really appreciate your time and um, the excellent presentation. And for those of you who did ask how to join the user group. There's contact information through the links on the website that I provided in the chat. If you're interested in joining CEMs, that's the IUCN Commission on Ecosystem Management's thematic group on ecosystem restoration, you can contact Brock or myself and our emails are posted on the IUCN CEM webpage for the group, which um, you can find uh, by just Googling. They are also at the very beginning of the chat and I'll post them in again. So appreciate all of you participating. Um, you can see on the screen here, our next session on October 16th and we hope we'll see you next month for discussing improving outcomes. Planting. Thanks everyone and especially you, Emmanuel. My pleasure, have a nice day. Oh, good Thank night. you very much. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you everybody for joining.